Welcome to African Drums this evening. This evening we have a very special guest, a guest who is a historian, an author, a researcher. He's visited over 107 countries in the world, lectured at over 49. He's the most prolific student of our Dr. Ivan Van Sertemann, and in his own right, he is one of the world's leading authorities on the African presence in Asia. Welcome, Dr. Well, Rashidi. Thank you for having <laughs> me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> now, this evening, Dr. Rashidi is going to be assisting us to understand a little bit more about the global African presence and how uh, that presence has been presented to us how the changes have occurred over the years and how those changes have or have not again been presented to us accurately. Now one of the things that his mentor has always said is uh, it is important to travel to all the ends of the globe and to set the record straight. Now Dr. Rashidi has certainly done that. And uh, what we would like to start out the question with is why is it important to actually study African history and in fact to travel to the ends of the globe to set the record straight? I think you could say that all strong people emphasize their history all the time. Weak people don't. Mm -hmm. Weak people look for special occasions. They look for Black History Month or Kwanzaa or in the United States Martin Luther King's birthday. Strong people do it all the time. They do it every day. They have their schools. They monitor the educational institutions in their community. Uh, they teach their children their culture on Saturdays. Well, African people are just the opposite of that for the most part. And we raise this question, why is it important? I think that you could measure a people's status in the world by the emphasis or lack of emphasis that they put on their history and culture. Mm -hmm. And I use this simple expression all the time, and that is, what you do for yourself depends on what you think of yourself and what you think of yourself depends on what you know of yourself and what you know of yourself depends on what you have been told so if you think you don't have a history mm -hmm. or that your history begins in a jungle mm -hmm. or your history begins with slavery or your history is insignificant it's not unusual for the n-word to roll easily off your tongue mm -hmm. for the b-word to be common mm -hmm. for you to shoot another African down in the street because you see no historical value with that person. Malcolm X used to say, of all our studies, history is most qualified to reward our research. For from, So for me, it's very, very basic. Mm -hmm. And Ivan Van Sertema spent his life with those same kinds of principles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, as we move forward, what we are finding is over the years we have had uh, a lot of changes have occurred and um, a lot of new information has become available. Mm -hmm. All right. Information that places a lot of the work within the last hundred years um, that shows that Africans are all over the world, have been all over the world, mm -hmm. have civilizations all over the world. And uh, mm -hmm. what that has caused is a, a lot of uh, people to think that history was all a lie, it needs to all be rewritten. Mm. And um, could you shed some light a little bit on the, just the global context? And then what I'd like you to do for as we go through the program is to take sections at a time. Okay. And then elaborate on the current information, the current revisions, and how those are impacting the way uh, history, African history, is actually presented. Now, we don't consider history beginning with slavery, so <laughs> we want to get out of that, that, that context right away. All right, I think the first thing we have to say and be very clear on is that humanity began in Africa, mm -hmm. that there's only one mother continent. 
and that African people began to filter out of Africa probably well over 100,000 years ago, mm -hmm. long before enslavement. Mm -hmm. I also want to make very clear, and if not for those migrations, the rest of the world would have remained devoid of human life. Mm -hmm. So Africa is the parent continent. I also want to make clear, especially in a place like Guyana, that there's only one race, mm -hmm. and that's the human race which has its roots in Africa, that we have far more in common than we do that separates us, although sometimes you get the opposite impression. So humanity began to filter out of Africa, and I, I say that because I want us to be clear when we talk about the global African presence, that in a sense we are all African. And I think the problem is, and this gets to your question, we've been taught that Africa is such a negative place that most of us, I think I can say most of us, would go to great lengths to distance ourselves from Africa. So you could take a brother or sister right here in Guyana who looks like he may be Congolese or she may be from uh, Zaire, I should say um, Gabon, anywhere in Africa, and they will say, I'm not an African. Mm -hmm. Even though phenotypically they are African mm -hmm. and culturally they are African whether they choose to admit it or not because we have been taught that Africa is a terrible, terrible place. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what we have to get to the crux of. I've heard people with doctor degrees like I have mm -hmm. in the United States say things as offensive as thank God for slavery because at least it got us out of Africa mm -hmm. or we could be like those Africans or don't call or don't call me or, or call me anything but an African mm -hmm. so this is the problem mm -hmm. and I think that Ivan was dedicated to correcting that mythology about Africa mm -hmm. so humanity emerges out of Africa and they filter to the far corners of the earth and many of them go into Asia. In fact, Asia is the first continent uh, that we could uh, talk about in terms of, of the African presence. And I want to kind of do a global overview, but you mentioned the new researches and new findings. Mm -hmm. I said all that to say I think we've had for a very long period of time enough information, mm -hmm. you know, to refute the negative images that we have of Africa. Mm -hmm. The problem is it has not penetrated the popular imagination. Mm -hmm. Ivan, in perhaps his most important book to me, which is called Blacks in Science, mm -hmm. I think it's very important, talked about Africans who domesticated fire, mm -hmm. Africans who were early innovators in metallurgy, mm -hmm. you know, Africans who were astronomers, who, who were stargazers. Science has shown this a long time ago, mm -hmm. but in the popular imagination, Africa is still a terrible, terrible, terrible place. Mm -hmm. And we speak of Africa in the most simplistic terms. So, for example, if I go to Cameroon, people want to know if I contacted the Ebola virus. But the Ebola is in Guinea, Sierra Leone, and uh, Liberia, thousands and thousands of miles away from there. It's farther than um, we are from New York City. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have to change the simplistic view that we have of Africa. Mm -hmm. It's not just the information. It's not just the research. We have to find a way to put it in the popular imagination so that people, black people, white people, red people, every, yellow people, everybody begins to think of Africa in a new light. And I think that that has to be the foundation of even the historical researches that we do and the impact that they're mm -hmm. going to have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the historical research, as you said, is, introduces some new things and you want to provide a global context. Could you start us then from? So many new things. From um, the that even cause us to redefine what we mean by civilization. Mm -hmm. I was in Mexico in uh, July. I took mm -hmm. a group there and we had a very interesting tour guide. He was a Mexican scholar, brilliant. And we both came to the conclusion that the framework that we're operating within is Eurocentric. So that, for example, um, people ask me, Dr. Rashidi, what was the original name for the continent of Africa? Mm -hmm. And we would say that the whole idea of continents comes out of the European world. Mm -hmm. How would ancient people even know that they were on a continent? Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that a lot of what we have to do is re uh, begin to analyze the framework itself. Mm -hmm. So civilization, when, when I talk about civilization, historically I've meant um, a culture with characterized by four component parts. Urbanization, metallurgy, um, writing systems, agricultural science mm -hmm. but now you're talking about and we talked about it before the show began civilizations that are being discovered in South America that are tens of thousands of years older than that yeah. and now people are saying in South Africa 
or southern Africa, civilization may be 75,000 years yeah. old. So we have to redefine what we mean, I think, by civilization. Mm -hmm. We know, for example, that they found um, a mine in Swaziland that's 47,000 years old, people mining iron ore 47,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Or a new find in Swaziland just within the last few years called the uh, Lebombo Bone. Yeah. It's 37,000 years old. It's the first known use of mathematics in the world. We find evidences of art in southern Africa 75,000 years old. In 1999, a report came out published by Chinese scientists saying that virtually everybody in China today has African DNA and African blood types. When they had the big tsunami in South Asia, a team of scientists from Stanford University in California, a prestigious university, went to the Andaman Islands and studied these quote-unquote primitive black people in the Andaman Islands and found that they had something like an inner radar system that told them the tsunami will come mm -hmm. in and went to the high ground. Mm -hmm. And now scientists are saying that this, these are the people who uh, are the descendants of the first people to leave Africa and go into Asia. Mm -hmm. So you have one report after the other after the other, and they seem to come with increasing rapidity mm -hmm. that show um, that Africans were old before Europeans were even born. Mm -hmm. But again, my issue is how do we give this information to the, the masses of our people? Mm -hmm. Because dates and facts and figures mean little unless they have an impact. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the real problem and that's why a lot of us are turned off by history. They are unable to see the practical value mm -hmm. of history. And we have to be creative in, in uh, giving that information. Mm -hmm. Now, give them that information and be creative. Mm -hmm. What suggestions do you have now that we can move forward? Well, what I do is I, I'm very visual. Mm -hmm. I'm in Guyana to do a series of uh, lectures, mm -hmm. and they've had meetings for me. And as you know, uh, there was a big dinner and reception in my honor last night, and I'm supposed to meet with the mayor. Those things don't mean anything to me. Mm -hmm. I'll do it because I'm asked to do it, and I try to be a nice guy. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to lecture. Mm -hmm. That's why I came to Guyana. And I try to be very visual. I show lots of pictures mm -hmm. so that people can see for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, the old maxim, seeing is believing, and a picture's worth a thousand words. So I do that. Mm -hmm. uh, some people in the hip-hop community have taken this information, and they're disseminating it in the form of hip-hop. And then there's a very popular DVD in the United States right now called Hidden Colors. Yeah, yeah. And people are coming, they stop me in airports, mm -hmm. in train stations, on the street, and say, are you Renoko Rashi? Didn't I see you in Hidden Colors? Yes, yeah. And so I think that uh, these are some of the methods that we have to use. We have to be creative. You know, a week ago, I took a train, 12 hours, from Charlotte, North Carolina to Philadelphia. 12 mm -hmm. hours. Mm -hmm. That gave me plenty of time to walk around the, the, uh, all the compartments in the train. And I'd say of the people on that train, maybe 80% were black. I didn't see a single person reading a book. Not one mm -hmm. person reading. That disturbs me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it shows me, too, that technology changes mm -hmm. and you have to adapt. It's a new world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. Just so you know, though, Hidden Colors is one of, the, one of our favorites. People we have told me that, <laughs> that, <laughs> that for, is a very for, for their generation, mm -hmm. younger people, I'm 60 now, so I, I think of myself <laughs> as an elder. Yeah, right. Not uh, yet. Pe people have <laughs> told me that uh, for their generation, Hidden Colors was like the autobiography of Malcolm X from my generation. Mm -hmm. But it's also rather frightening to me mm -hmm. because it seems to me people would rather have a sound bite, mm -hmm. something that sounds cute. Mm -hmm than substantive, you know, substantial kinds of information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I see in general in the United States, I won't say the world, but the U.S., a kind of dumbing down mm -hmm. of information. Mm -hmm. So now you have reality TV shows, you have Dancing with the Stars, you, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Things that are really not designed to elevate you, mm -hmm. things that are not designed to give you critical thinking and evaluation skills. Mm -hmm. And that's rather frightening to me, too. I'm glad for the success of Hidden Colors. But I still rather encourage people to do some research, go do some study, mm -hmm. read a book. Mm -hmm. You know, and even if you're going to go online, use it for more than, you know, a dating service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know you didn't ask me for all this. <laughs> I guess I'm just being spontaneous. You know. No, but that is We can important. go back to the scholarship. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but the spontaneity is important because oftentimes we get wrapped in the, in, in the program yeah. and we don't get the benefit of the spontaneity. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's very important to have the spontaneity and to let it flow. Um, 
but coming back to the, the same spontaneity, mm -hmm. if now let's look at education, right? The formal education systems oftentimes do not provide for it, provide in, in the normal course of a day the opportunity for African education, mm -hmm. anything about African culture, African history. What we're finding is this has to be done b extracurricular. Yes. Extracurricular. Um, we have DVDs that we can, people would have to purchase. There are books now that are available. Um, there is also, again, like some musicians who want to do this. Mm -hmm. But the limitation is, again, the receptive, the, the public. They still have to get sensitized before they even feel that they need to expose themselves to this unknown stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, what we're finding also is that people are being asked to choose between being African and being a, re a particular religion. You know, are you African or are you Christian? Are you African or are you Muslim? Are you African? And so there are a lot of uh, real decisions that people have to make in, in terms of soul searching to even come to the point to say, and this is why there's an obstacle to say I'm African. There are people I know that say, I have a problem with being African. I have a problem with being black. I have a problem with being... I am, you know, I prefer to be neutral. Literally. Uh, I was reading uh, something on, the, the, t on the, uh, the, the little girl that was in, in um, Bill Cosby's yeah. show. Raven Simone. Raven Simone. Her, 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 her recent interview, you've seen that. Mm. Yeah, I know about it. Mm. Yeah. So, where does that come from? I mean, how does one get to the point where you can say, I am neutral? I want to be no race. I want to be no anything. I, ju I just want to be me. But me meaning... Not African. N yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of it is just pure opportunism. Mm -hmm. I think if a person were to say, look, I'm black, I'm proud, I come from Africa, I don't know how popular that would make you in the broader world. Mm -hmm. So if you say, or this guy Farrell mm -hmm. has a song... Um, very popular artist right now. Um, I think it's called Happy or something mm -hmm. like that. I think that advances his career because mm -hmm. it's not threatening. Mm -hmm. It's what people want to hear. Mm -hmm. The wider community wants to hear. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear this black stuff. Mm -hmm. They want to hear we're all the same and in spite of the fact that we've been beaten and brutalized and everything, mm -hmm. it's still okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not mad. Yeah. Don't think everything don't is about cool. It. Africa was a long time ago, mm -hmm. but you can never tell a Jewish person that the Holocaust was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And you cannot accuse a Jewish person of um, promoting their own culture, their own history. Mm -hmm. But many of those very same people will tell you, get over it. Mm -hmm. After all, wasn't slavery a long time ago? Mm -hmm. So this Raven Simone, I think, um, in my mind, I don't know her, she seems opportunistic. Mm -hmm. The media really played that up. Yeah. And now and, uh, you also look at the fact you have a black president, so race, whether you talk about it or not, in the United States is there for mm -hmm. everybody to see. It's what we call the 800-pound gorilla in the room, mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. elephant in the room. And also the fact that in the United States right now you have a spate, a whole series of police shootings of unarmed black youth, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's made the news. Mm -hmm. So when you have a person say, no, 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 we're all the same. Mm -hmm. And color really doesn't matter. And I don't believe in race. And Africa was a long time ago, and I just see myself as an American. I find that very opportunistic, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and white people love that mm -hmm. because it makes people feel more comfortable. But at the same time, if you had asked me, that, I'm 60 now. If you had asked me that question when I was a youth, I might have said the same thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not black. Mm -hmm. I'm not African. I don't want to have nothing to do with those Africans. The difference is. I've grown. I've uh, learned about Africa. Okay. You see, knowledge, and so as you become exposed mm -hmm. to it, mm -hmm. then you, you're more comfortable. Yeah. So while I have a U.S. passport, 
and people will call me an African American, which I'm comfortable with, I prefer to be known as an African in America. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. Instead of running from Africa, mm -hmm. instead of running from blackness, I run to it. Mm -hmm. I embrace it. Mm -hmm. But it took me a while to do that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I think we have to be a little patient, mm -hmm. you know, because we realize that most of us weren't born with African mm -hmm. consciousness. It's something that uh, has grown in us mm -hmm. through our exposure. And the saddest part of all, I think, is that many Africans on the continent feel that way. Mm -hmm. And they've taken on the same kind of attitudes in terms of anti-Africanism as other people mm -hmm. have. We are taught 24-7 to be anti-African, mm -hmm. to hate Africa. Even in Africa. Even in Africa. Mm -hmm. So that if I come to Guyana and find anti-African attitudes, it doesn't surprise me. If a person says, I'm not an African, I'm a Negro. I'm not black, I'm brown. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't surprise mm -hmm. me. And in many ways, while I feel a degree of disgust, I kind of feel sorry for people yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they're the object of sympathy for me because they're ignorant and they just don't know any yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of consciousness raising that needs to be A done. lot. And like you said, that takes, that takes time. Mm -hmm. Time and continuously. Now tell me about some of the other things that, that seem to be uh, rocking the boat not only with respect to African consciousness, but with respect to other groups that uh, that used race as a, as a basis for for um, for separation, for domination. I'm th thinking of things like the Aryan invasion theory, uh. right? Where they're finding now that that really there was no Aryan invasion, and they're not uh, it's, it's Aryan migration, but then no, it's not really Aryan migration, and then. Oh, it's not really that, it's Aryan visitation. And uh, so what they're finding, and this is their own research showing that, and, and then looking at the Gulf of Cambay, the research, the, uh, the information they found there is that you have civilizations older than the Indus Valley. So how it, it says that the Aryan is not, it never really happened to the extent that I explain that a little bit, a bit to us, so that we can, we can. I, I consider that power politics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The so Aryan invasion theory. Yeah, the Aryan invasion theory became very, um, or the refuti refuting the Aryan invasion mm -hmm. became very popular when this uh, group called the BJP, mm -hmm. very conservative right wing, very pro Hindu uh, political party, came uh, into power in India, mm -hmm. and th this began to be the pervasive theme. Mm -hmm. The Aryan was always here. Yeah that this idea that the Aryan was a violent, nomadic person that came in and destroyed black civilization, nonsense. Mm -hmm. It's just a rewriting of history. Mm -hmm. It's happening in the United States on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. I guess the Aryan invasion uh, uh, issue is important right now because we are in Guyana mm -hmm. and you have this very ugly divide mm -hmm. between Indians and Africans, mm -hmm. which I find reprehensible. It's mm -hmm. very sad. Mm -hmm. But in the United States, it happens on a smaller scale. For example, in the state of Texas, people are now saying in the textbooks, because it's very conservative, slavery really wasn't so bad. No. Mm -hmm. The slaves were looked after. Mm -hmm. Everybody had a job. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't so bad after mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you, you can probably find many, many, many examples of that. There's an African proverb that says, um, until the lion has his historian, yeah. the hunter will always be a hero. Mm -hmm. And so what we have are people in power telling their story, mm -hmm. telling it from their perspective. And I don't blame them for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I, I hear, um, when I post something on Facebook or social media, Renoko, they didn't tell us that. Mm -hmm. We weren't informed mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. when it comes to you know African achievements. And then I say, that's true. But after all, whose responsibility is it for us to know our history and tell our story? Mm -hmm. And if you allow other people to tell your story, then you kind of get what you deserve. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to try to do is light a fire under our people to write our own histories, mm -hmm. to tell our own stories. Mm -hmm. In terms of the Gulf of Gambay, that's just one more example, mm -hmm. I think, of new information that substantiates the old information, mm -hmm. but is downplayed in the popular media. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another example, classic example. It's a very important one. This is back in Africa. Mm -hmm. Now, you have what's called Narmer's Palette. This mm -hmm. is a famous... Um, it's a slab of stone mm -hmm. made of slate, I think, and it shows what people have been arguing for years, the unification of Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt, mm -hmm. Southern Egypt, Lower Egypt, and this uh, begins the dynastic phase, Egypt of the Pharaohs. 
there's a brilliant scholar who went to Harvard, white man, mm -hmm. and I have to say that because if it's a black person, people will say, oh, he's just, it's political, <laughs> yeah, he's pushing his agenda. This is a European, mm -hmm. and isn't it a shame that we have to do it's, that? Yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> but his name was Walter A. Fair Service mm -hmm. Jr. He's an ancestor now. I had a lot of respect for him. He says, that's nonsense. This man, I almost said this brother, did meticulous research on this brilliant scholar. He says, it doesn't represent that at all. What it represents is the unification of Upper Egypt and Nubia. Mm -hmm. Now this is revolutionary. Yeah, yeah. And Nubia. Completely ignored. Mm -hmm. Or you have another European American named Bruce Williams, mm -hmm. who in 1980 uh, did an analysis of um, a stone incense burner found in a place called Kusto mm -hmm. in Nubia. Mm -hmm. And it's six generations before the first dynasty of Egypt, and it shows before, clearly before, if before mm -hmm. about 3,300 uh, years ago, 3,300 BC, it shows clearly the first kingdom in the world, the first king that we know of on earth. Mm -hmm. He was completely ostracized. Mm -hmm. He lost his teaching position mm -hmm. because these things are simply not um, palatable. Yeah. And today is Columbus Day. Yeah. And in spite of everything we know to the contrary, they're still talking about Columbus yeah. discovered America. Yeah. What an insult yeah. Yeah. to Native Americans. You call them Amerindians. Mm -hmm. What an insult to Africans okay. because Columbus is almost single-handedly responsible for beginning the transatlantic slave trade. Mm -hmm. And so history is given to us largely by people in power. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that we have to seek to empower ourselves, not to take vengeance, not to do bad things to other people. Because that is the farthest thing in the world from mm -hmm. my mind. But to empower ourselves so that we can create a society, a world order that is based on truth and justice and righteousness and order. And I think that in essence, that's what this historical research is all about. It's not just to have facts and figures. It's not just to make you feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. But it's to give you the information that allows you to empower yourself so we can create a society, a new world order based on humanism mm -hmm. or what the people in southern Africa call Ubuntu mm -hmm. and I think that Africans have that in abundance mm -hmm. even now in spite of everything we've suffered mm -hmm. black people say can't we all just get along mm -hmm. you know I, I just want a peaceful world I just want to be left alone mm -hmm. you know this whole idea of love your enemy seems to be strong, strong. in the African community yeah, in spite yeah. of everything we've suffered we just want to get along. Well, we just want to be happy. Yeah, Can yeah. we all live in peace and harmony? Mm -hmm. That seems to be intrinsically African. It's not European. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how does that then all relate to the other things that are going on in the world? Like um, some people think that the, the Ebola scare, for example, is all part of a modern, current day uh, flag, false flag, if you will. Mm -hmm. Operations that set up so that... Um, people can just invade and do much more, much more destruction of history, much more uh, removing of li liberty so that you don't have, um, you don't have the wherewithal to even pursue the kinds of things you're talking about. You know who Ebola is good for? Hmm? The pharmaceutical companies. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Stock is rising. Oh They're yeah. going to make a vast fortune. Yeah. Many people said that about AIDS and HIV. Yep. And there's certainly precedence for it if you look at the Tuskegee experiments yeah. in the United yeah. States where yeah. black men were used for experimental purposes. Yeah, but we, if we remember you can find something similar to that in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And even in the uh, places like Auschwitz, mm -hmm. you know, where people were experimented on. And so it's difficult to say. I'm not an expert on Ebola. Mm -hmm. I know it's not a good thing for Africa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if we can survive AIDS, if we can survive the transatlantic slave trade, if we can survive colonization and invasion, Somehow we have to rise to the occasion and we're going to survive this too. Tell me about the strengths of the African that you've encountered worldwide to resist all the kinds of things that you just mentioned. In other words, the, 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 the qualities that, that have us here today as opposed to, as you say, the victims, the victims, the victimhood. Mm -hmm. I think there are certain deeply rooted qualities in African people that God is good. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at Greek mythology, God is a kind of a malevolent creature. Mm -hmm. You know, he's out to get you. He's mm -hmm. putting all these challenges in front of you. Mm -hmm. I think the idea that God is good, that human beings are essentially good, mm -hmm that we can survive all things. Somebody gave me a very interesting statistic, not a statistic, but a fact. And they told me that in this country, there's a high rate of suicide. Mm -hmm. 
but the rate of suicide is very low among black people. Mm -hmm. That somehow, no matter how tough life is, mm -hmm. it's very difficult for the average black person to contemplate taking their own life. Mm -hmm. That somehow you can survive it. Somehow, if you're strong enough, you can get over it. That we can survive enslavement. Mm -hmm. That we will survive oppression. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are certain in char internal characteristics in us that are just ingrained, maybe from tens of thousands of perhaps millions of years of just of nature survival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't have uh, any other way to effectively put it. Mm -hmm. That God is good, that people are good, that we can survive, that we're going to get over this, that it will pass, that the sun will shine tomorrow, no matter how dark it is tonight. I think that those are internal characteristics of African people that are very, very important. At the same time, I think that uh, we've been exploited because of that. Mm -hmm. So that if I go to a black person and say, you need to spend money with other black people, the average black person will say, why should I do that? Mm -hmm. I just want the best quality service. Mm -hmm. Or in the United States, if I say a black man should marry a black woman, a lot of brothers get mad at me for that. Mm -hmm. They'll say, aren't we all the same? Mm -hmm. You know, and so I think that other people exploit these things, mm -hmm. our willingness to give them their our money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not patronize other black people. Mm -hmm. I think other people exploit that. Mm -hmm. But I think at the same time, it's a positive thing in the sense that we have a greater degree, I think, of humanity mm -hmm. than any other people. Mm -hmm. And so it's a blessing and I think it's a curse at the same time. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very interesting because some people will really quarrel with you. Oh yeah, we have more. <laughs> oh yeah, black people are more human than. Uh, I think. Than I don't think there's any question about <laughs> it. Or a black person will have an image of a white Jesus hanging on their wall, mm -hmm. and I will say, take that image down, and people will say, but God has no color. Mm -hmm. It's irrelevant. God is a spirit. Mm -hmm. But to me, I have a problem with that because I think that if you're going to worship something or somebody, they should at least look like you. Mm -hmm. But the, a lot of sisters, oh no, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Stop talking that stuff. And I think that these are the kinds of things when I mean an intrinsic kind of humanism mm -hmm. in African people. Mm -hmm. And you can fuss, you can get angry, but it remains. They so had an example of a motorist in Los Angeles not long ago named Rodney King who was nearly beaten to within mm -hmm. an inch of his life. Mm -hmm. And when he was finally interviewed, the first thing he said was, can we all just get along? Mm -hmm. Now, if they had interviewed me, I assure you, <laughs> the commentary would have been vastly different. But the person said, can we all just get along? And he's been beaten to death, stomped, kicked, humiliated by six white cops. Uh -huh. And can we all just get, get along? along. <laughs> and that's, that's Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you see as the... the We've gotten a long way from history. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you see as the next 20 years mm. it, in the path that we're going right now, given the context of um, what's happening in the world, what's happening in terms of weather changes, weather modifications, in terms of, uh, of viruses that are popping up, that are... That are being used for all kinds of reasons, uh, including making a lot of money. Um, where do you see us 20 years from now? I see us rising. 95% okay. um, of the time I'm very, very positive about African people. 5% mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of the time I really wonder about us. But most of the time, like if you were to go to Africa right now, the majority of the population is very, very young, mm -hmm. under 25, 26 years old. Mm -hmm. In spite of everything, they're positive, they're optimistic, mm -hmm. generally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They say, give us 20 years and give us democracy. Mm -hmm. Because Africa is still the wealthiest continent in the world in terms of natural resources. Mm -hmm. I also see Africans outside of Africa building stronger bridges to Africa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think that's the key. Mm -hmm. Now, a Jewish person in New York City may never go to Tel Aviv, may never go to Jerusalem but he identifies instinctively with Israel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that Africans in the diaspora have to have that same relationship to the motherland, mm -hmm. especially African Americans. I'm not trying to sound arrogant or elitist, but I think that we have more resources and access to more resources mm -hmm. than just about any other group of black people in the world. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't util utilize them very effectively. Mm -hmm. Also, in the United States, we have a relative degree of freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. We can assemble to a large extent. Very few of us are hungry. We have laptops and tablets mm -hmm. and we have the technology and we have the time to sit and reason with each other. Mm -hmm. What we lack, I think, is the consciousness, the African consciousness. Mm -hmm. And that takes us back to history. 
So what we want to do is use this information to make our people proud of themselves. We talk about Egypt a lot because Egypt was the greatest nation I think the world has ever seen. It was in Africa, so we talk about Egypt because we want to give our people a sense of pride. We want them to identify with the motherland. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I see. Mm -hmm. I see a gradual, gradual rise in African consciousness. I see building bridges between the diaspora and Africa. And uh, I see positive things for Africa. I think we're going to eradicate Ebola. We're mm -hmm. going to er eradicate malaria. Mm -hmm. We're going to deal with this issue of Islamic fundamentalism, which is very uh, prominent in Africa mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. I think that we have to look at our history and see that we have a, a resilient uh, past mm -hmm. and the things we've done in the past gives us the foundation for what we must do in the future. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now the new new countries, and I, when I say new countries, a lot of people don't realize that you know the extent of the, the African diaspora, particularly in the Americas, mm. right, particularly in, in South America. Mm -hmm. People have no idea what Colombia look, looks like, what what uh, what Ecuador looks like in terms of. Um, you go to some places and uh, in Brazil, and it's like walking down <laughs> Georgetown, mm -hmm. right? But as people become more aware and that diaspora becomes more connected, um, your hypothesis that's going to cause a more powerful unity I have no greater, question about greater that. unity mm -hmm. right a, a more a more positive a reinforcement if you will and the more we go back in history and uh, and firm up the history you know there were historians write their own history and that becomes available mm. then that you know what we, what I found too, I was in Venezuela not too long ago and um, one of the things that I was told by a, an Amerindian, one of the Indians there, is that you can take a course in your particular tribal language up to the university level. Now, you, you talked about university before. And what I find is, I find in Africa, that is a, a requirement now. Every student must take must study an African language formally, which, as I understood it, that was not required, you know, 30, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it was just the opposite. Forget your language. Mm -hmm. So I think to complement what you were saying is that the, 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 the notion that everybody must have an African root rooted in an African language is a step in the right direction. Well, you know, we, a lot of times we say, obviously we were taken from Africa, but I think it's equal, equally uh, clear that we took Africa with us. Mm -hmm. We just don't know it's African. We don't know it's African, yeah. You know, you, I see it in religion and mm -hmm. in Christianity. Mm -hmm. The Christianity that we have, most of us in the United States, African Americans, I won't speak for other Africans, although I think I could, is not traditional Western Christianity. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a church of God in Christ. We did what we call speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. We danced. We shouted. That's African. Mm -hmm. That's not traditional Christianity. I bet it's the same thing here. Mm -hmm. And we also brought our religions with us. Mm -hmm. Condomble, mm -hmm. Santeria, mm -hmm. Vodun. A lot of us just don't know they're African. And some of us do. Marcus Garvey, I think, is somebody that I really admire. And this is the 100th anniversary of his organization. And I'm a traveling ambassador for the UNI and ACL. Garvey was asked, Mr. Garvey, because he was from Jamaica, he said, Ms. people said, Mr. Garvey, you're an African or you're a Jamaican. He said, I will not give up a continent for an island. Mm -hmm. See, Garvey was able to see the big picture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of our people are stuck on small. They're not able to see the big picture. Mm -hmm. They emphasize tribes right. instead of nations and continents. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And somehow, again, we as educators and leaders have to be able to change that paradigm. So we have a big responsibility, and I think we have to convince our people, too, that what we do matters and what we don't do matters. That Don't look for a great leader. Look in the mirror mm -hmm. and see what you do every day. How does it advance or retard the cause of my people? Mm -hmm. Another thing that's important to point out, what we're talking about today is not racist. Mm -hmm. It's not racism. Mm -hmm. It's about love. Mm -hmm. It's about empowerment. It's hard to love others if you don't love yourself. Mm -hmm. 
And history and culture is our immune system. It can give us the strength to stand in the face of overwhelming odds. In spite of everything, no matter how beaten down we are, we're still a very strong people. Mm -hmm. The spirit of resistance, the spirit of uh, liberation is still deep within us. Mm -hmm. So we have to tap that. Mm -hmm. and we have to utilize it. Mm -hmm. And that will ensure our future. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you said something very, very profound just now about the, the roots and the, the roots of the culture and, and, and spirituality. Because oftentimes what we find is that we don't relate to anything African. <laughs> and in spite and of the I fact I that we're African. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, but but we, we, there's a resistance to do that. Mm -hmm. There is, there is a, 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 you know what's called a saktit? No, I'm not familiar with that. A saktit, when somebody goes... Oh, okay, okay, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, but that is that was beaten <laughs> out of us here. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. you do not suck your teeth yeah. because that is resistance. Uh -huh. I mean, that is rudeness. Yeah, you cannot, s you dare not suck your teeth. Mm -hmm. But when you find <laughs> out that is typically African, big time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and but we don't know, and, and as a result of that, but when you carry things with you. Mm -hmm. As you get more conscious, and yeah. you, you do it and you laugh, you yes. know, you think mm -hmm. well, that is really <laughs> Coffee's statue. Coffee's statue has certain characteristics, and one of it is the pouted mouth. Mm -hmm. The pouted mouth is a sign of rudeness, it's a sign of resistance, right? We were told, don't you pout your mouth like that, you know, you, you could get boxed if you pout your mouth. <laughs> But that is resistance which the colonials have tried to beat out of us mm -hmm. over the years. But I, I think uh, th one, of the, one of the most refreshing things is, in fact, as we become more conscious, and you said very well, you become it more comfortable. Yeah. So it's hard to shake somebody who is rooted and comfortable. <laughs> you have a serious problem shaking somebody who is rooted in their history and comfortable. I think too that we, we have to understand that this is a process. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not an event. It's a process. It takes a long time. Mm -hmm. The situation that we're in didn't start yesterday mm -hmm. and it's not going to end tomorrow mm -hmm. no matter how hard you work mm -hmm. no matter what you do. Other lessons that we learn is you can't do it by yourself. Self, yeah. mm -hmm. Care how hard you work the system will grind you down. Mm -hmm. You need people. Mm -hmm. We must be organized. And so I say we have to stay strong, mm -hmm. have to love black women, you know, and I say that because there are black women in the room. I think <laughs> that we have to lift each other up and not tear each other down. Okay. We have to emphasize the positive. It's easy to be negative, but I think that there are a lot of things that we can find to take inspiration in and be positive mm -hmm. about. And I think that in spite of everything, the future belongs to us. Yeah, yeah. The future belongs to us. It does indeed. Yeah. But the future also uh, belongs to those who prepare for it today. Ah, okay, okay. You can't just sit and... Uh, no, no, no. You have to, you have to act. And, you can't sit can't and wait. pray. And That's and right. Oh, man. Prayer is a good thing, but prayer by itself oh. is not enough. Enough. Well, okay. You've got to pray and work. There you I go. Mm -hmm. You have to pray and cry, pray That's and it. work. That's pray it. And, okay. and don't give up. And don't give up. And don't give up. But coming back to our schedule. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm, no. ready. I'm ready. No, no, no. I, I, you were supposed to go to Colombia. Well, my next trip is to Barbados. Uh -huh. A lecture tour there, and then eleven days in Colombia. What is what is happening in Colombia? Colombia. I'm speaking at three different universities mm -hmm. in three different states. Mm -hmm. I'll be there for about ten days. It'll be my first visit to mainland Colombia, and I'm excited about that because Colombia is the largest. Um, is a country with the largest African Hispanic population. Now the Africans in the yeah. Anglophone world, we have our great scholars. Mm -hmm. Rodney and George Jean James and Ivan Van Sertema and so many others. Mm -hmm. Chancellor Williams, the list is long. Yeah. And the Francophone Africans have Sheikh Hans Job and mm -hmm. Theophile Ben, great African right. scholars. But in the uh, Hispanic African world and as well as the Lusophone African world, the Portuguese African world, from what I gather all they basically know is they were enslaved. Mm -hmm. Anything that goes back into antiquity seems to be totally new for them. Mm -hmm. And so I want to help shake that up. Mm -hmm. You know, I've written or edited 18 books now. I have about four or five more I'm working on right now, including a children's book on the African diaspora. Mm -hmm. And I want to have that book translated into Spanish, French, Dutch, 
and Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I think that those sisters and brothers, more than any other group of Africans, I'm talking about the Hispanic yeah, Africans yeah. now, mm -hmm. have a very low self-esteem. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. And there are tens of millions of them in Peru, and Ecuador, Bolivia, mm -hmm. Colombia, Venezuela, Panama, um, you know, the list, yeah, Honduras, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mexico, and I think that uh, I really want to be able to have an impact mm -hmm. there, and I intend to. Mm -hmm. Again, I, what I'm doing, I invite other people to come. I wish in this, uh, in during my stay in Guyana, we had Indians who came. Mm -hmm. We're not, I mean, not anti-anybody. Mm -hmm. We are inclusive, mm -hmm. sometimes to our own detriment. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say that um, what we're trying to do is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we're trying to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. And we think that the utilization of our history is a part of that process. Awesome. And I certainly want to do that in Colombia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's something we really don't pay much attention to, the, 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 um, the Spanish blacks or the Portuguese blacks. Yeah, and a lot of all those and black people are, in Brazil. And there are millions and millions and millions. Do you know them. that Brazil is one of the few countries in the world where it's, I don't know if they practice it, but it's mandated that they teach African and African Brazilian history from K through 12. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Brazil. Brazil, yeah. Now, I went to Brazil the last time in October 2008. I spoke at a historic conference. And people were talking in Brazil and they were uh, showing pictures. I said, Don, those pictures look so familiar. And somebody finally said, and we're lucky, we're fortunate, we want to acknowledge Dr. Renoko Rashidi in the room because we're using his photographs <laughs> right now. And I was shocked <laughs> that they were using me as a primary reference. Uh -huh. So I think that we have access to more information, we have freedom of movement, and we need to utilize that. Yes, we have all kinds of issues, all kinds of handicaps, but we also have opportunities mm -hmm. to change this. Mm -hmm. And we ask ourselves, what will future generations say about us? When I talk about African history, I start with people like Imhotep, the world's first scientist, an African, mm -hmm. first architect, father of medicine, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, who lived thousands of years ago. And I challenge the audience, and I say, here, look, we're talking about people who lived thousands of years ago, and yet we talk about him and, and her as though they're with us in the room. What will future generations say about us? Mm -hmm. What will our legacy be? What will our statement in life be? And again, we want people to see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We want to ignoble our people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or ennoble. We want to lift them up, mm -hmm. raise them up. And history is one thing that can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And African history is not exclusive. Mm -hmm. African history is everybody's history. history That's yeah. how we started. Yeah, yeah. Africans in Asia, Africans yeah. in Europe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all phases in history. Mm -hmm. Africans have never been isolated from the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And we need to teach history from a point of pr from perspective of inclusivity and not exclusivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me about um, the last book that you're writing, oh. the very last one, yeah. The well, I have two. I can't separate two. one from the other. One is called the Ivan Van Sertima Papers. It's a tribute to Ivan, but it's also a collection of my writings on the Nile Valley. Mm -hmm. I've had my books published on uh, the African presence in Europe. I've had my books published on the African presence in Asia. But my writings that I did for Dr. Van Sertima on the Nile Valley have never been published outside of his journals, so mm -hmm. that's that. Mm -hmm. And the other one is called The Global African Presence. It's a Tell book. Me about that. Yeah. I, it's got to be at least 450, 500 pages. Mm -hmm. Too big. Mm -hmm. And it'll be a collection of my travel essays. It was written on the anniversary of my having visited 100 countries. Mm -hmm. And so in the process of this, most of the time, lonely, in a room, a hotel room mm -hmm. by myself, I sit at night mm -hmm. and write about the experience, mm -hmm. and I want, and those are all being compiled with my best travel photos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are the two books that I have coming out, and they should be available if I finally finish them up and do the photos uh, sometime early next year. Early next year. Mm -hmm. And the children's books? The children's book, I'm going to give myself another nine months to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not a book that I'm writing, it's a book that I'm editing, but I suspect that I'll end up doing most of the writing too. Mm -hmm. But when you work with other people, you have to take their schedules into consideration. And I don't want it to be a big book, mm -hmm. no more than 100 pages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Is it going to be a lot, a lot of photographs? A lot of photos, oh. basics, some mm -hmm. timelines, some maps, mm -hmm. you know, very, very, very visual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's another book. I'm doing another book on great black leaders, ancient and modern. I'm doing another book on great African women, ancient and modern. I cannot say enough good things about black women. Uh, I love them, I salute them, I honor them, I praise them. Also, I'm doing a book, the book that I'm looking forward to the most, that I'm enjoying the most, is the African presence in major world museums. African collections in museums around the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's something that stimulates my intellectual um, curiosity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. An important lesson too, 
I enjoy what I do. Mm -hmm. You I have some of our people who see themselves as martyrs. Mm -hmm. I don't see myself as a martyr. You're I love having too much fun. I'm having fun, <laughs> and I enjoy the intellectual stimulation, and I feel like I'm doing something positive, uh -huh. and that really gives you a solid foundation. Uh -huh. You don't want to be miserable, miserable all the time. Uh -huh. You want to be able to say, "I lived my life. I had few regrets. I enjoyed it." And this is my legacy. Mm -hmm. When I face the ancestors, when I look at Ivan Van Sertum again, mm -hmm. and George G.M. James again, mm -hmm. and Chancellor Williams and John Henry Clark, they will say to me, I think, Renoko, what did you do to advance the cause of my people? Mm -hmm. And I will say, I did this, that, and the other, and I will lift my head, and they say, welcome, my brother. Well, uh -huh. A job well done. And that's motivation for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any last words? We are down to our last minutes. No, I just want to. I want to say that I've enjoyed you. That I enjoyed the interaction. I enjoyed the intellectual stimulation. I'm pleased to be in Guyana. I'm grateful for the to the people who brought me here, and I look forward to making it a second home. A second home. Yeah, a second home. Okay. I, n I never feel quite like I'm at home oh. anywhere. <laughs> you know, I haven't unpacked a suitcase in 17 years. Mm -hmm. I've traveled all over the world, and there's a lot of other places I want to mm -hmm. see. Next time I come back, I want to talk more about the African presence globally. I want to talk about black people in Australia, okay, in okay. the Pacific. You know, there was a branch of the Garvey movement in Australia, yeah. among oh, Aboriginal yeah. Australians. Yeah. You yeah. have millions of black people in Melanesia who say we come from Africa mm -hmm. and yet they've never really been looked at from an African perspective right. so there's much work to do and uh, and I love it now do you have any um, students that are following you um, and following your lead the way the way you know uh, Van Sertima has affected students in the past yes I do it's a little bit tricky because I'm not at a university. Mm -hmm. So you see, if I was at a university, I'd have a bunch of graduate students. Mm -hmm. But when you're not at a university, you're doing independent research, right. and you're moving all the time. Right. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to have a, that kind of relationship. Mm -hmm. but fortunately, through social media, mm -hmm. I think I'm able to impact a lot of people, mm -hmm. and I am working on that. Mm -hmm. I think about what will happen to my library when I'm gone. Well, when a scholar dies, and your work is scattered to the far corners of the earth. Your archives, your books, your papers. That's a crime against humanity. That's, that's a yeah, sin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. these are things that we have to think about. And I'm at an age now where it's very important for me to develop that cadre yeah. of students yeah. that will take it further. Yeah. I think you can measure a good teacher by the students that they produce. Well, you are certainly... My brother, <laughs> thank you so much. You are certainly a measure. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. My pleasure. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've just had a... A full hour with Dr. Renoko Rashidi, and uh, what we plan to do is um, next week we will continue this with uh, hopefully have another another uh, good speaker and um, and also uh, some other guests who will continue the dialogue. So thank you, Dr. Rashidi. Thank you, sir. And. Um, Good luck in your travels you so as you much. move forward mm -hmm. and be safe and keep the fire burning and, of oh. course, set the record straight. I'm doing my best. Good. Thank you. Sir. Thanks again. All right. Thanks. <laughs> that was a good show. <laughs>